We'll go back one sec. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Welcome everyone as we gather together for worship in the Kidderminster Izmir team and beyond. It's good to welcome you um, as you connect with us um, virtually um, to join us as we celebrate Candlemas or the presentation of Jesus in the temple. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. Um, if you'd like to light a candle um, or another um, maybe a battery powered tea light or a torch or anything as part of our service and you can do so safely. Um, please have one ready um, as we will reach that point early on um, in the service. Um, it used to be that candles were, were lit and sometimes blessed and sent out um, to mark Candlemas, um, which brings us to the end of the Easter and Epiphany season. And it's a, a time when we kind of look back to Christmas and look forwards and ahead to Lent and in time Easter. Come on. Let us worship together. 40 days ago, we celebrated Jesus being born. Today, we think about the day when Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to present him before God, to offer him to the Father and show him to the people. We'll hear about two people who recognise Jesus as their Lord, and we celebrate his glory, that he is our Lord's. Again, so if you do have a candle, battery powered tea light or other light ready, and you can light it safely, just have that ready for later in the service. But we'll begin with our opening hymn, that famous Charles Wesley hymn. The words will come up on the screen as we sing together, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
the light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living words. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So we hear God's words of forgiveness. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So our collect our prayer for this day and this week. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. So we hear our first reading. Cynthia is going to read from Malachi chapter three. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? and who can stand when he appears. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. So if you have your candle, your light or some sort of light, now's the time to light it as we sing our next song and then we will blow it out or switch it off, extinguish it in some form when the gospel reading has ended. So if you'd like to light your lights and we're going to sing Graham Kendrick's song, Like a Candle Flame.
part, I don't think I can go back, sorry. So we hear our gospel reading from Sandy and Hayward. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord. O Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you've prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You, o Christ. So now you can blow out or switch off your lights. And our reflection from our team, Rector Nigel. Struggling with the technology there, apologies. <laughs> Let's just pray. So may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, those are quite amazing readings from Malachi and from Luke. And I just want to refer firstly back to the reading from Malachi. There's a part in Malachi that really strikes me as being important in our own personal journeys of faith, especially when we think, um, about where we've come from and where we're going to, where our journey's going. It's the, uh, the last words of, of our reading, really, today, which struck me. It talks about God coming to be a judge with us, to judge those uh, amongst us. And yet at the end it says, do not fear me. Do not fear God. And that says to me a lot about the judgment of God. 
the judgment of how we treat the oppressed and those who are struggling at this time. I think we often have an idea about God, that God is a God to fear, a God who punishes. And certainly during the past 12 months, I've heard many mentions of this must all be from God. God punishing us for things that we've done wrong. I've heard that many times through my life when things have happened. I've been watching a programme recently about the AIDS crisis that happened in the 80s. And again, it was, well, it's God punishing us. I have to say, I believe in the words of Malachi, and it's not about a God who punishes us, a God who takes out wrath upon us. It's a God who loves us. And it's the God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be present with us. Now we get a glimpse in Luke of the presentation of Christ and his early days. We know so little about the early days of Christ, really. It's something we've discussed in our Bible group, Bible Light, over the past few weeks, from the birth of Christ at Christmas through uh, the, the time of Epiphany and trying to work out, actually, what was Christ's childhood like? came to uh, a real discussion last week when we had the reading of the wedding at Cana and we thought about the first miracle and what, if, what had gone on before. Well, this gives us a little bit of a glimpse into that early life of Christ. It helps us to understand that Christ was brought up in a very traditional Jewish family. The reading tells us that he's been circumcised on the eighth day, just as the covenant with Abraham in, in Genesis that we read about. It goes on to say that he, he is the first born of Mary and Joseph, the first son, and therefore, under Moses' laws, He's brought to the temple to be offered to God the first fruits. This is a traditional Jewish family. A family that holds to those traditions, believes in those laws and follows God faithfully. We know that from Mary's acceptance uh, of the, the carrying of Jesus from the angel. We know that from Joseph. From the journey to Nazareth, from the visit of the, uh, the, the shepherds, we know that this is a special child and it comes to a head in the temple. They've journeyed down to the temple from Nazareth. They're bringing this child before God, offering him, doing the right thing. And they meet Simeon, a man who's been called into the temple that day by the Holy Spirit. A man who recognises who this child is, the Christ child. He uses those words as he says that prayer, that nunc dimit dimitus, as we call it now. And he uses those words of light. He will be a light. For me, this whole story, this whole, en whole encounter is all about the development of relationship and ministry. We see Christ as this baby, as this babe in arms. He's taken by Simeon and held. As you hold a baby, you see new life. You see the gentleness, the humility, the vulnerability. And we see that in this episode of Christ's ministry as a baby. The expectation was that the Messiah would come with great robes, would be a powerful man. And yet here we see the glimpse of the vulnerability of Christ in the arms of a man, a man who recognises the truth of God, a God who loves, a God who cares, a God who wants us to change, who is judging us, but not in the way we think. That judgment comes through forgiveness, through walking with us and helping us to understand, showing us how to live. This is the start of the most amazing journey. Simeon has been called, called into the temple to affirm that to his mother and father and to those around. And then it goes to Anna, this woman who was widowed so early and has spent her life for God in the temple. And she recognises too the importance of Christ. 
she goes on and then evangelizes telling people about this child and the difference that he's going to make it's the beginning of an amazing story a story that 2000 years later still has a major impact on us and yet a story it's so easy to just gloss over what do we need to take from today's story? I think there are two things for me that are really important that we, we travel with over the next few days, weeks and months. And that is that Christ is the light. The light that comes into the darkness and we are in dark times. It's also about the relationship. The relationship that we see in this encounter and that goes through all encounters as we move forward into Lent and look forward to Easter. Jesus is a man who develops those relationships and we're very familiar with them later on. And yet as a babe, those relationships are also forming. The intimacy of that meeting with Simeon and Anna. The intimacy of holding Jesus in the arms, in his arms. We're challenged today to think about our own call, our own call to faith and what we do with it. And that's about relationship. It's about intimacy with one another, intimacy with God, in sharing our stories, in being open and honest. It's also about shining that light of Christ into the darkness so as we move forward over the next few weeks, let's remember this very delicate story of a vulnerable babe held in arms as his parents, traditional parents, offer him to God. Let's remember where this leads to. The vulnerability never goes. Vulnerability is at the essence of Christ, even as he was nailed to the cross even through his resurrection, through his further encounters. We may be feeling vulnerable and frail ourselves, but within that there is great strength. Let's not forget that God through works through each and, each and every one of us. And let's let God lead us and call us. Amen. Just a moment to reflect on those words from Nigel. And our next hymn was one I was not too familiar with um, before I started preparing this service, but it speaks so much about what Nigel's spoken about, the theme of this service and words which are really fitting and appropriate to the times in which we are living. In a world where people walk in darkness.
And so let us together declare our faith in God. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Levain is going to lead us in our prayers. At the end of each short prayer, um, would you please say, after I say, Jesus, light of the world, just say, hear our prayer. Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you this morning that you are a light in this dark world. We thank you that you went to the cross so that we might have this light. We thank you that you are a lighthouse through the storms that guide us, so that we are not completely dashed upon the rocks. We thank you for all of these, and Lord, may we share that light with others. Jesus, light of the world, hear, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, we have been commissioned to go out into your world to share the light. Please guide us and show us how you would like us to do this. Please give us the opportunity to be a blessing to others so that they may know that you are a God of love, of compassion, that wants to share other people's lives and wants to be part of them. Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer. This week we have seen a dreadful milestone. Over 100,000 people have died with COVID and many more, no doubt, as a result of other things. We have also seen Holocaust Day. Let us just take a moment of silence to think about these people. Some we may know ourselves, but whoever it is, there has been an awful lot of grief and suffering and bereavement over these few months and over the years due to man's inhumanity to man. Oh Lord, each one of these lives is precious to you. We're told in the word of God that you are touched with the feelings of our infirmity and that you share our grief. And we pray for those this morning that are suffering because of bereavement. We thank you for the lives and the joy and the blessing that each one of these that have gone to their reward have had. O oh Lord, in particular we pray this morning for those in our community that are suffering loss. We thank you for the lives of John Waldron and Mary Ashcroft. Oh Lord, they have been such a help and such a mainstay in St John's Wolverley. And those of us that know them will miss them dreadfully. We pray for their families and we pray for the church family that you will comfort and console. Jesus, light of the world. Hear our prayer. We think of those that are still suffering, those that are in hospital, those that are caring. 
Lord, we pray that you will be with them at this time. We pray for your healing hand to rest on each and every one of them, so that they may know that you are there with them. We pray for those that may be suffering from mental problems at this moment, the hidden illness, the hidden torment. We pray that you will draw us alongside and share that light and shine that light into lives to bring comfort and consolation and peace from anxiety. Jesus, light of the world. Hear our prayer. And at this time where there seems to be squabbles and various things happening within our world, we pray for wisdom of our leaders. We pray that there will be peace in our time. And we pray for those that are involved on the front line with manufacture of vaccines, those that are making decisions so that everyone can benefit from the scientific research that we have done. Jesus, light of the world. Hear our prayer. prayer. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, let us pray together in the words that Jesus taught his friends to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let us give thanks for the light in the world, the glory of our Saviour. Glory to Christ, Son of Mary, born a child, you are one with us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, son of David, born to rule, you reign in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, son of man, born to save, you are the light of the world. Glory to God in the highest. Our closing song is one with a Latin American feel to it. And we'll sing it. It will be sung through twice, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And it's quite straightforward to pick up. Sent by the Lord am I. <laughs>
thank you for being with us as we've worshipped together today. Thank you to everyone that's played a part in our service. In a moment, we'll say goodbye to the people who joined us on Facebook. But after our closing blessing, please do on, stay on if you're able to share in friendship after our service in a breakout room and do keep in touch with us via our website. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Christ, the son of righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your hearts. Christ, the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet in the way of peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.